no, ah, not the blue screen of death. Ever wonder how to fix that blue screen of death? Follow along because here's one way to resolve that issue. On the side of the laptop you may find a vent outlet. That's where all the collected air comes out from the computer. Of course the computer being an electronic component it gives out a lot of heat. That heat needs to be expelled or gotten rid of from the computer itself. Uh, you probably hear the fan going on in the background and especially if you have a laptop sitting on your lap you'll probably notice that your legs get very very hot. One of the reasons you end up with a blue screen of death is due to overheating. So what I'll do is I'll strip down this laptop and see if there's a reason for it overheating. One program I use quite a bit is called CoreTemp and what it does is give, give us an indication of how the CPU temperature is going. Um, here's an indication as you can see um, we've got a maximum of 48 degrees and a minim minimum of 21 degrees at this particular point. Um, the maximum that it's allowed to go in this particular case is 85 degrees. So um, at the moment our CPU is running about 27 degrees which is okay. This is not the laptop that I'm working on but my other computer. But this gives you a good indication of how this program works. I'd recommend it if you're concerned about the temperature running of your computer. It's called Core Temp and it's a free program. I've already partially pulled this laptop down but just to help you get through it um, what you start with is the battery pack which is over here. It's held in by two locking tabs. Once you release those the battery pack will just pull out like that. Put that to one side. Next step is uh, pulling off the uh, hard drive cover. In this particular case it's just held in by one screw. So once that screw is released it may, it's held in by a few clips but you can just gently pull that out of place. Once again put that out of the road. The hard drive itself is held in by one screw that goes into here and once you've got that out you can just gently pull that out of the terminals and put it carefully to one side. All the other screws, there's quite a few of them um, all around the place as you can see in the background here um, I've actually put them to one side already i just help you to see those. So I've got quite a pile over the back here but um, yeah make sure that you put them in sequence there is a few extras in there that um, are a little bit different. For instance, this silver one here is that goes into our hard drive. Um, that's the hard drive anchor screw there. So make sure that you put that back into place. Uh, it is it is a little bit hard to get the cover off. Uh, it may take a little bit of tweaking, but you pull it towards you, or sorry, the other way around. You pull it that way, and up here there's a few little clips that are a little bit difficult to get to. But once you pivot it up, it's okay. This is our laptop with the cover removed, the back cover removed. The area that we're going to be focusing on is our cooling fan, which is over here. There's a connector here. This is where the uh, air is exhausted out, and that's where you feel the heat out through this vent here. And notice these cooling ribs that come along here. They go to our processors in behind these screws here. Of course, if this cooling fan isn't doing its job, then the heat will not be dissipated from these um, CPUs down through and exhausted through our vents. So we'll pull that section off next and have a look underneath. I've got the cooling section off here. This is where the CPUs face. I've actually cleaned off the um, thermal paste at the moment. Um, but one thing I did find in behind these vents in behind here I found a whole heap of dust bunnies. Check them out. Look at that. Now that's going to create overheating, isn't it? If it can't get rid of the heat, where's the heat go? Well, it stays in your uh, computer there, in your laptop, and all it does is increase the heat on your CPUs, and therefore the laptop wants to shut down, giving us the blue screen of death in this particular case. Not always, but in this particular case, that's the reason. So, dust bunnies we do not like. Bye.
the process is to put on some thermal paste. Um, make sure that you get a good quality brand. Don't buy any rubbish. Um, and you just put that, you simply put it on your little CPUs that were covered by our cooling system uh, there before. Don't put on too much, but you want to make sure that there's good thermal com uh, contact. And what you can do also is just even it out with, um, I have a, an old credit card type thing that I've just cut into that sort of shape. And now I can just gently, hopefully without making a mess with my hands, I haven't got the shakes, just make sure it's nice and even and that you've covered it all. You want the whole lot covered, you don't want in any area that isn't covered by the thermal paste because that will give you the heat transfer that you need. Right, so I've got that covered now. Now I can start the reassemble. First things first, I can put my fan back in. Don't forget that little connector there, that just pops into place. Uh, let's have a look, it goes, bear with, bear with, there we go, that way isn't it? So we just pop our little connector back into there. Making sure it's in securely. The two screws can go back into place. Now the main, the main cooling thing has to go back into place. I'm not exactly sure the name of it. But uh, I've cleaned up these areas, the contact areas. They're now clean. And I've vacuumed all the, the fins out. So that's ready to go back into place. And they're just held in by several screws here that are actually spring-loaded, as you can see. Next step is to put the back plate on, I believe. Now this was the tricky part before. That clips in the back there as you can see. Once those are in place, that should just drop down nicely. My next thing is my hard drive. It goes in next. Just make sure there's no dust on there and it should just slide straight into place. So I should be able to put in the rest now. Fingers crossed. to go on is our hard drive and RAM cover. As you can see there's all vents down here which release the, uh, the hot air which is what we want to get rid of. This before was running at about 75 degrees when I had three videos running at the same time. So hopefully this will sort that issue out and I've run, I've put on the CPU temp program and hopefully that'll give us an indication that it, uh, it's cooled down a bit. Battery next. So, fingers crossed. It should be a goer. I'm just about to start it up. Let's see what happens. Okay. Hmm. 
Well, at least it's firing up, that's a good thing, hey? At the moment I've got five videos running in the background, which is one more than I had before. Um, as you can see, the core temperature here between the two cores is roughly 47 and 46. Uh, the peak is uh, 63 and 66, and the load is cut down as well because the temperature has changed. Before I was getting a high of 75 degrees, pretty much on both of those cores, and the core average temperature was certainly way up there. I think it was in about 65 range, so the temperature has certainly dropped. So guys, I hope this has helped you toward solving the blue screen of death when it's related to overheating issues. Of course, there's other issues involved as well. Of course, blue screen can happen as a result of other issues, but in this case, it was temperature related. I can actually feel the um, temperature of the air coming out of the cooling system and it's heaps cooler than it was before too. So I hope this has been of interest to you, this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, um, give it a like, feel free to write any comments below, and I'll catch you up next time. So thanks for watching. See you later, guys.